you all welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jimai machuku and today i have another anatomy video for you what is this video about from the title abdominal region versus abdominal quadrant so a lot of medical students usually mistake these two things when you ask about region they're talking about quadrat and when you talk about quadrat they're talking about region from the name quadrat it means four things so the abdomen is actually sectioned into four then for the regions the abdominal region is actually sectioned into nine and on this video i'm going to categorically tell you the difference between the abdominal quadrat abdominal regions and their associated organs so guys stay tuned get your stationaries to jot whatever i'll be saying you will need it for your exams now looking at these models this is the abdominal region, this is the thoracic region, and this is the abdominal region. Now, a situation whereby the um, abdominal region is sectioned into four parts, that's the abdominal quadrat. But when it's not sectioned into nine different parts, it is the regions. You've gotten that first point. So let me take you to a graphical video. You can now clearly see the abdominal regions and organs. Some authorities will go as far as calling the abdominal quadrants the abdominal pelvic quadrant because at some point the extent of this region reaches the pelvic area you know this is the pelvic bone right good so i got it simplified here for you um let's start with the vertical line here this vertical line is the median plane um you recall what median is from our previous video right yes of course you can't forget that's a line passing through the middle part of the body and here is specifically following the linear alba that's from the xiphoid process or the xiphoid process down to the pubic symphysis so this is why those authorities will prefer to call the abdominal quadrant the abdominal pelvic quadrant now the next line which is horizontal or transverse and um, that line forms the trans umbilical plane and why they call it trans umbilical vein is because it's passing through the umbilicus which is your navel. So that's why it's called the trans umbilical -like pain. So these two lines divide the um, abdominal region into four quadrants. And the name of those quadrants are the right upper quadrant, the right lower quadrant, the left upper quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. So I'm going to show you the quadrant on this model. So I'm going to be starting with the right upper quadrant. The right upper quadrant, you have the left upper quadrant here, you have the right lower quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. Now for the right upper quadrant, you have the right lobe of the liver, you have the stomach, you have the transverse column, and you have the gallbladder, this green part, the gallbladder. Now if we take out the liver, we have the kidney, the right kidney, and we have the right suprarenal gland, which is pyramidal in shape, and we also have the duodenum, the first part of the duodenum. So that's about the right quadrant. So let's put the lever back in and move to the next quadrant. Now for the left upper quadrant, that's this side, this part, we'll have the left lobe of the lever, we'll have the stomach, a greater portion of the stomach, we'll still have the transverse colon, and if we we'll still remove the lever and we remove the stomach, we're going to see the pancreas, we're also going to see the left adrenal gland, which is um, semilunar in shape or crescentric in shape. We're also going to see the left kidney, and we'll have the spleen in that area. And we've said the transverse colon. Okay, that's about the left upper quadrant. So we go to the right lower quadrant. Now, in the right lower quadrant, we have the large intestine, we have the cecum. We have the appendix somewhere here. I just took out the small intestine and its parts. Well, I'll put it back. Um, I have the right urethra, the right reproductive organs, the ovary, fallopian tube, and spermatic cord, which may not really be visible here. You, have, you only see the ovary here because this is actually a female model. In the male model, you should see spermatic cord, so it's actually in the right um, lower quadrant. Now for the left lower quadrant, let me put in this intestine back. We'll have the intestine. Um, if I take it off, we have the sigmoid colon, we have the descending colon, 
the sigmoid colon. You have the left fallopian tube. Should I take this up? Okay. You can see, you can see the left fallopian tube there, the left ovary. If this were to be a male model, you should see spermatic cords and likes of it. Basically, that's all about the quadrat. So if you are in anatomical position, you can actually visualize the organs in each of the quadrats. You get it. Now, moving to the regions, I said we have nine regions and it's divided by four lines. Now, the four lines are, we have two parasagittal planes. Now, if you remember what we said about sagittal planes, that it divides the body into left and right. Good. So two parasagittal planes, and they are called the mid-clavicular plane. They're usually close to the clavicle, this clavicle part here. So the line cross here and here. So I'm going to show you two transverse lines. And the transverse line is called subcostal, just underneath the tenth rib. And we have the next one, intertubacular um, line. That intertubacular line is just at the lower border of L5. So you've gotten the difference. Now we're going to dive into the organs. Since I've showed you in details the organs in the quadrat with the model, um, this shouldn't be something you should cram. You need not cram the organs in these nine regions. The first region is the right hypochondria region. Now hypochondria, because it is below the cartilage, you get like below the cartilage, that's why it's hypochondria. Now the next one is the epigastric region. An epigastric just above the gastric, epigastric above the gastric. So that's where you find the epigastric region. Now for the epigastric region, you have the liver, the stomach, the spleen, the duodenum, the adrenal gland, and the pancreas. The next one is now the left hypochondrial region. Now for the left hypochondrial region, you have the liver, the stomach, the pancreas, the left kidney, the spleen, the large intestine, and Part of the small intestine. Moving to the middle division, you have the right lumbar region. Now, some authorities call it the right flank. You get right flank, left flank, right um, lumbar region, the left lumbar region. Now, separating the right and left lumbar region, we have the umbilical region because that's where the umbilicus is. So, it's the umbilical region. Moving to the last region of three, we have the right iliac region. Some other authorities will say the right groin, you get it. So the right iliac region, and this way you have the left iliac region, or the left groin. So separating the two um, iliac region, we have the hypogastric region. Hypo, below the um, stomach. You have epi, above the stomach, below the stomach. Some other authorities will also call it pubic region, you get. Then some other authorities will say there is also a tenth region called perineum. But for this purpose of your learning, except you've gone advanced into anatomy, we have nine regions separated by four lines, two are parasagittal planes, the midclavicular planes, then two are transverse planes, the subcostal and the intertubacular planes, dividing it into nine regions. Now, what's the clinical significance of knowing the organs in these abdominal regions and this abdominal quadrant? Now, this is it. The clinical significance is that it helps clinicians, health practitioners, um, those that want to um, palpate or diagnose a particular illness. They can know, okay, for instance, if the um, stomach is inflammated, that's gastritis, or if the pancreas is inflammated, that's pancreatitis. I usually tell some of my students, anywhere you find ITIS at the end of any organ, it usually means inflammation. So for stomach, gastri gastric, ITIS, gastritis, that's inflammation of the stomach. So let me come back. Now, if someone's um, pancreas is inflammated, that's gastritis, the person will need to undergo a pancreatectomy um, surgery. Now, for the clinician to at least know what the issue is, to identify the um, issue, the person will first feel pain at the lower upper quadrant or the epigastric region. Now, this is the um, clinical significance of knowing the organ in a particular region. And this is not so difficult. You can always visualize your body, know the right, know the left, you know the upper, know the lower, know what organ is there if you are in anatomical position. So that's about the um, clinical importance of knowing the organs in various quadrants and regions.
and you see that it's a lot helpful for clinical practitioners now coming to education it helps us to teach you which organ is located in a particular place and for further explanation maybe you want to do relations in anatomy where you now talk about okay the bed of the stomach what is forming the bed of the stomach so if you know whatever is in that region or that quadrant you should be able to easily tell okay this is at this quadrant and this is at that quadrant i hope you understand what i'm saying so you guys that brings us to the end of this video i'm sure it was really really helpful do well to share to your friends like the video and subscribe to my youtube channel while we continue giving you more videos on anatomy lessons lifestyle vlogs travel tourism and nyc experience thank you for following me through this process have a nice day it's your girl jimaiwa bye